Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Girl Talk. I've got a little bit of mess and a little bit of drama today for you guys. First, we're going to talk about Obese to Beast, who actually put out his debut video on Foodie Beauty. I know that he has gotten so many requests to do this. I just know it. So let's talk about it. And then we're going to talk about how Chantal actually admitted that she is back with Natter. It was a little bit uh, not straightforward, but it's pretty obvious. And then we're going to talk about Nick Akato, who has revealed that he is unhappy with his body. And lastly, we're going to take a look at a couple of questions from Amberlynn Reed. You're not going to want to miss these questions. Okay, all that and more coming up on today's edition of Girl Talk. Let's just get right into it. I mean, shall we? All right, you guys, the first thing I wanted to talk about was this obese to beast video that he actually put out today a few hours ago. Now, this was his foodie beauty debut, which I'm sure was highly, highly, highly requested for him to do because he has done many videos on Amberlynn in the past. He talks about how she went from makeup to mukbangs. She started off her channel as a beauty guru, and then once she did a mukbang, she got a ton of views, so she decided to just roll with it, and that's what led to the foodie beauty we know and love today. One of his major points is basically the same as one of his major points for Amber Lynn, and that is the mukbangs, right? And mixing that with the weight loss, it never works. It invites so much criticism, and that's the same thing that happened with ALR. I think that's why they are grouped together here online, because they did do that same thing. Although it is a bit different. While Chantal started off with makeup and then mukbangs and then weight loss, Amber Lynn actually started off with weight loss and then introduced the mukbangs during the mukbang craze of like 2016. Amber was getting a ton of views on those mukbangs. That's why she decided to add a ton of mukbangs to her repertoire. But when you go back and forth from eating copious amounts of junk food to weight loss health journey and you want people to take you seriously, it's just not going to work. Okay, now let's talk about something that I think that he got wrong. Now, during the video, he talks about how she suffers with many different addiction issues, being food as well as the cola that happened last summer. But he also mentions that she might have a addiction. And I just don't see that as the case. I think that she has an addiction to male attention that is seen through the production that she created with Natter, as well as her being lighter on the male reaction channels, if you know what I mean. She goes hard against the female reaction channels, but in some ways she is a lot lighter and sometimes even flirts with some of the male reaction channels. I know that she likes to be very open about her sexcapades, but really I think it's just another way for her to garner attention. And lastly, he talks about how she is kind of in a weird position because she is a lol cow. So it makes you wonder, like, what should she put out next on her channel? Acknowledging that she shares a little bit too much of her life and people are commenting on things that otherwise they might have no business commenting on. Overall, for me, it was just interesting seeing him dip his toe in the foodie beauty pool because I'm sure he's been asked to do that video a million times and he finally did it. Okay, now let's address some tea from yesterday regarding Foodie Beauty. She actually went on another live stream with Real Effing Drama, which is the show with Real Stream and Miss Effing Wonderful that we talked about before. And during this live stream, Real Stream asks her, why do you think you get so much criticism? Why do you think people don't like you here on YouTube? And Chantal's response was very telling, admitting that it's because she's going back to Natter. That's only one of the problems, but take a look at this clip. She's basically admitting that she is with Natter. Yeah. I just want to be my effing self, you know? Yeah. Um, what, what do you think people, like, go at you for? Like, because I don't think you're as controversial as people try to make you, like, I don't know, like, um... What do you think the main reason people try to like shit on you about it? Like, what's what's the what's the deal? What do you think? Right now, it? Natter, I guess they don't like. But that I'm if with him. if he wasn't an, an issue, what what would it be? I don't know. The sweetest pie tomorrow? Oh, you know it. You know I'm gonna manipulate the fuck out of you, and you're gonna eat it up, and you're gonna watch me. <laughs> And in one of her most recent live streams from yesterday, she slips up yet again when she gets a super chat that says, they don't like when I'm with Natter. They don't like that I'm with Natter. Some people don't. When I was with him. Lies. They were all lies. 
the way that I see it actually is this is kind of like a double lie, like an inception lie where she's like lying, but it's also a lie that she's with Natter because Natter doesn't claim her. Natter is with Dee Dee. Natter just placates her every now and again. We talked about that on my live stream. What do you guys think about this situation? Honestly, who cares if she's with Natter at this point? Let her have him. But it's still a lie that she's with him. So it's like she's with him physically, but she's not actually with him. At one point during yesterday's myriad of live streams, she actually did a weigh-in and she came in at 344.2. To be honest, I don't believe this weigh-in because she has talked in the past about her scale being broken, among other tricks of the trade. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I wouldn't believe a weigh-in from her unless it was one of those scales that they have at the doctor with the weights that you slide. <laughs> In other news, she admits that Paneer is a $50 a day habit for her. And when someone asks her about the legal case, she says that she can't talk about it right now. She can't admit whether or not she is with Natter, but it is clear as day that she is. People have suspected that maybe she dropped her case on Natter, which we know is not possible because it's in the Crown's hand now. Although there was talk about her taking back her statement and visiting the police a second or third time. To be honest, this is not my expertise. Allegedly, there is a court date for Natter on May 17th, but we'll have to wait it out and see what happens on May 17th. In regards to what she is spending her time doing right now, it looks like Natter put up a video yesterday that is obvious she edited, it, as well as a video 23 minutes ago that it is obvious she edited again. Keeping her busy, Natter. But one thing I didn't like about this video is oh. that she only had it in 360p. Petty, I know, but if you're going to do it, at least do it in 720p, Chantal. Pathetic. Now for a little bit of comic relief. Listen closely to this clip. You can hear Pete's in the background raging. But what happened to her? She went live today in a stream called Being Boring. And when I click on the notification, it says that this video has been removed by the uploader. Did anyone catch what exactly went on in that video? Probably nothing. But let's take a look at these new community tab posts where she says what she's going to be doing on Twitch. It's a venture. Hi, I have decided to do something meaningful with my Twitch channel. In the meantime, I'm going to commence sleep streams. Is that meaningful? I'm going to try it tonight and see how it goes. That could be interesting. Now, I fart a lot and have been told I say weird things. So we shall see. This should be interesting. Will you guys check out her sleep stream? I'm sure the chat will go wild. It's interesting how she shows every waking moment of her life, or at least she used to before she got back with Natter and has been very hush-hush about it. So for her to share her sleeping, I mean, that's the one thing that I guess we haven't seen much of. All right, you guys, for this part of the video, I wanted to share some I wanted to share some Nikocado tea, and I'm not talking about his most recent We Broke Up video. We've seen that a hundred times. Him and Orlin are perfectly fine behind the scenes, or at least that's my suspicions. The whole video, the whole intro's gone. You don't even know what happened. Because I was forced to delete something. It's because... like you forced me to go fat. Nope. Of course, all couples have problems, but we've seen him clickbait their breakup hundreds of times, literally. So it's nothing new. Take a look at this post, though, from Twitter, where Nikocado Avocado shares a picture of him when he used to be thin and in shape. Nikocado says, I hate what I did to my body. Let's take a look at some of these comments. So undo it. You'll make more money going back the other way than you will just passing away in the next 10 years. Go for it, Nick. You know you can. Bet your bank account doesn't. You could get the bariatric sleeve, but you wouldn't be able to mukbang anymore. So Nikocado is in an interesting position. If he switched his channel completely to weight loss and stopped all the junk food, do you think that he would lose all of his viewers? He has been doing that for several years now. We know that when certain YouTubers switch up their content, a lot of people don't stick around and it might take some time to rebuild that audience again. But I do feel like anyone on YouTube can make it with different content. If they do keep up the same work ethic, it's going to take time to rebuild the audience, but I do think that it can be done. 
But I do get a feeling that things would be different for Nikocado. I think that people would stick around. I think that this could get him national attention. Seriously, if he does lose his weight and turn his life around and gets back on track, I could definitely see him doing the morning talk show circuit because they bring on people all the time or maybe a situation like the doctors, like a midday type of show. They bring on people all the time that have weight loss success stories. And a lot of times these people aren't even famous YouTubers. Is that what it is for Nick Akato? Is it just about the money? Is that why he continues to do these mukbangs regardless of his decline in health? Or is there something else holding him back? Has he become so addicted to this food that it's a different story? Looking at some other recent tweets, he tweeted out, I'm 25 pounds away from 400. How did this happen? As well as, remember when you all tried canceling me for saying I'm against believe all women, which I think was when he had a rebuttal to Stephanie Sue back in 2019 slash the beginning of 2020. Well, now that's like saying believe all Ambers. Truthfully, there's just some Ambers out there who shouldn't be believed. Now, at first I thought this was a shade at Amberlynn Reed, and I think that part of it is, he says, Ambers with an S. But then I looked out at his timeline and he was talking a lot about the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. So I think this was initially for Amber Heard, but then he kind of roped in Amber Lynn as well by putting an S on the end. Speaking of Amber, I do have a couple of Q&A answers that I did want to share with you guys. I thought these were kind of interesting. While we wait for Amber to upload, I guess she will today. Here's what she has to say. Is it true that Eric saw your breasts? You've also said both Eric and Ricky have touched your breasts, to which Amber replies, LOL, yeah. Then Amber reveals something quite sad, actually. In one video, you talked about never having dates in high school. In another video, you said, had a lot of boyfriends, too many. It can't be both. But I have a very hard time believing that a 450 pound high school girl had too many boyfriends, to which Amber replied, did I say that they were high school boyfriends? Yeah, I was in high school, but they weren't. Sadly, 21 to 27 was my specialty. I clearly got taken advantage of, but I didn't care because I thrived off the attention. And one more, have you tested for prediabetes? I'm sure you have it. To which Amber replies, yes, I've been tested. Negative are the results. I think people get very confused when Amber talks about diabetes because she doesn't acknowledge that she is at such a risk for it. All right, you guys, it's our favorite time of the day. And that is, of course, comment of the day. Today's comment coming in from my reaction to Life by Jed from a few days ago. This comment comes in from Little Crocodile, who says the following, all this be your own advocate rhetoric from her, yet she couldn't even get her eating under control to have avoided this situation in the first place. And I found this comment interesting because if you guys remember her most recent trip to the hospital, how she did that three-part story time, she talked about how she had to get Jean to stick up for her in some situations. She wasn't able to be her own advocate, but she had Jean there to be an advocate for her. While I do agree with this statement on face value, I feel at this time that Jen has a problem with medical professionals in the first place, or maybe it's just anybody telling her what she doesn't want to hear. Okay, what a well-rounded episode. We really touched on just about everything. Okay, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you think about the obese to beast video? What do you think about Chantal admitting that she is back with Natter and Nick Akato possibly pursuing weight loss? He's unhappy with his body, as well as Amber Lynn and Eric touching her, <laughs> as well as Amber Lynn's Q&A questions. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.